As we continue through our shipping code lab, we've now added a loop so that if we want to ship more than one widget, or even just one widget, the loop will proceed as many times as it needs to and pre pre prepare as many shipping labels as required. Then the reorder will manage with the number of widgets ordered and the workflow will continue. Now, what if we want to ship to more than one address? That's a common thing that people will want to be able to do. We, maybe we could even offer drop shipping where we can ship 100 widgets to 100 different addresses. That we can do. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the fork task. And what a fork task does is it will break our workflow into X number of asynchronous tasks and then join it back together and continue the workflow. In one of the earlier videos, I did an example of making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich where you open the bread and you put two pieces of bread on the plate and then there's a fork. And on one fork, we spread the PB and on the other one, we spread the jelly. And these are asynchronous. If you have jelly and the peanut butter is coming because someone's delivering the peanut butter, you can do the jelly and wait for the peanut butter. Or if you have the peanut butter, you can do that and then you can go get the jelly. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. They both need to be done. And when they're done, you can close the sandwich and then eat your sandwich. We're going to do the same thing with our workflow. And I've mocked that up. So in this case, if we have two addresses, we can have a fork here to ship to address to Bob. And we can use this fork to ship to Barbara. If we wanted to do three, we could define that as well. The problem with the fork is that the number of times, the number of asynchronous tasks is defined at workflow definition, not at execution of the workflow. So we would need to create like a three path, a four path. A, you know, we don't want to do that. We want this to be generated dynamically at workflow runtime. And that's possible. There is another system task in conductor that's called the dynamic fork. And what that will do is at runtime, it will determine how many asynchronous tasks to run and it'll create those asynchronous, those tasks and run them. So you could have one address and there's no fork. You could have a hundred or anywhere in between and it all just is done at runtime. To do this, we're gonna need to do a little bit of work before we can do the fork. We need to determine how many they're gonna be. We need to format the data in the way that Conductor needs it to run the dynamic fork. So in the next few videos, we're going to prepare the data and prepare our workflow to handle a dynamic fork. But just so you can see that it does work, here is uh, the definition. We have a couple preparatory tasks running here and then this is our dynamic fork and when I run it I can run it and this is an example with four and here's an example with 16 so it works we just need to prepare the data so in the next couple videos we're going to prepare all of our data and we're going to prepare our workflow to handle the dynamic forks